Welcome home. Welcome home. It's good to have you back where you belong. You fought hard for this land you love, and I thank you for all of us. We're proud to call you one of our own. Welcome home. On behalf of Chapter 607, Vietnam Veterans of America, we welcome you to our National Vietnam War Veterans Day ceremony to honor all those who served during the Vietnam War. We give special honor and taps for those who gave their lives in this war. We also honor those who served, whether in combat or in supporting roles, including those who served but did not actually set foot in Vietnam. I was one such soldier. When I entered active duty as an Air Force Judge Advocate in 1971, I fully expected to go to Vietnam, but by this time the war was winding down and my service was at CONUS, Continental United States bases. For that reason, I wasn't sure whether I deserved to call myself a Vietnam veteran, and I said so at my first VVA meeting. But Jesse Donaldson here and others welcomed me and said, if you hadn't done your job here, we couldn't have done our job over there. I felt so much at home with VBA, and I'd like to think that the Lord called me to VBA for a reason, to assure Vietnam veterans and their loved ones that their service and sacrifice was not in vain. Because of vacillating civilian leadership, rebellious students, and a disloyal media, we were not allowed to win that war. But we did hold the line on communist expansion, and with our blood and bullets, we bought America and the free world a decade of time. I believe there is a direct link between the stand we took in Vietnam and the collapse of the Soviet Union 15 years later. So, to all those who lost loved ones, and to all who served, I extend this message. Your sacrifice was not in vain. America won the Cold War because you were willing to serve. Again, we thank you for being present, and I would allow night to turn the service over to Ken Garrett, who is going to give us our invocation. We'll now do the invocation, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, and the uh, play the national anthem, so please rise if you are able. O oh God, while we often think of our fallen brothers and sisters whose names fill the wall, we too often overlook those of our number whose departure from this life, while a result of their service to our nation was delayed, whose, service, whose suffering was painfully prolonged by lasting physical and emotional wounds. We pause now to remember them and those who cared for them, who loved them and who called them friend. May you comfort and strengthen those you left behind. We ask as well that you place your healing hand upon those who are still troubled in body and soul, that they may find wholeness and fullness of life. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all.
Please be seated, if you have a seat. And at this time, I'd like to call upon Bill Thomas. Bill is our song leader at First Presbyterian Church in Tallahassee, Alabama. He's gonna sing a special song for you here, Mansions of the Lord. Some of you may recall that movie about the Vietnam War, We Were Soldiers. This is the theme movie, or theme song from that movie. Chapter 607's Vietnam Veterans Day. This May will officially be 49 years since the end of the Vietnam War. May of next year, 2025, will be the official 50 year anniversary, if you could call it that, of the end of the Vietnam War. As not yet. As we go through this year and we approach the 50th year, it weighs heavy on Vietnam veterans. It weighs heavy thinking a half a century has passed since the total end of the Vietnam War. The memories will always be with us. It will never leave. You hear a lot of people say, well, why don't you just forget? Why don't you just put that behind you? When you bring it up, you can't put it behind you. You can't put them into it. It's there. The better you face it head on, the better off you'll be. But welcome to today. We got a special treat. We're going to unveil a new memorial. We hope you like it. Frankly, we love it. But uh, thank you for being here. If, if you're a Vietnam veteran, then you are among an exclusive brotherhood. We went where others would not go. We did what others would not do. And our lives were never the same. Those who are protected will never know of our sacrifice. We went over as 18, 19, 20 years old. And 12 to 13 months later, if you survived, you came back at 40. We were not welcomed home, as you know. No veteran before or since was treated the way we were. That is why when we get together and greet each other, among our first words are, welcome home. If you are still among the living, know that you are in the last 22, not 25 anymore, 22% of Vietnam veterans still alive. 
our biggest fear was not in dying. For even the Bible tells us there's no greater love to lay down one's life for a friend. Our biggest fear is being forgotten. We have more time behind us than we do ahead of us. With little time left to establish our legacy, we hope that this memorial, when completed, will be part of that legacy. Thank you. Remember, honor, and embrace the value and price of freedom. That is the mission for every citizen who lives under the flag of liberty of the United States of America. During our history as a nation, hundreds of thousands of our finest men and women laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. Countless others have sustained injuries, some of which heal while other wounds were life altering, leaving the veteran to cope daily with a high level of anguish often impossible to speak of. Today we honor, we remember, and we thank all these ones who suffered on our behalf for the cause of liberty and are most especially those who have paid the ultimate price for our freedom, having given all. At this time, I would like to call your attention to the table set before you where you will see a place setting to represent all those who could not join us today. In front of the table stands a rifle placed between a pair of worn boots capped with a helmet. The rifle is draped with dog tags. This is known as the Battle Cross or Soldier's Cross, a memorial to those who perished in combat. This soldier's cross or battlefield cross has its origins dating to the Civil War in that when soldiers were hastily buried between battles, the rifle was stabbed into the ground to mark their final resting place. Anything which identified the fallen was placed on the rifle so others would know who eternally rested there. Today, service members on the battlefield often are unable to attend the funerals of their fallen brothers and sisters in arms. So the battlefield cross or soldier's cross is placed in honor of those who have perished as a way to pay their last respects. Let us now review the meaning, meaning of the items which comprise the battle cross. The rifle. The rifle with bayonet affixed is the most important tool to the United States fighting man or woman. It is the core key to their survival. It is thrust into the ground, signifying that the one being remembered died in combat while fighting to the end. It signifies that the battle is over for this soldier when the rifle is left this way. The boots. The boots carry a soldier through, the com through combat for our freedom. They are the first and most important means of transportation during the time of military service. The boots are placed at the base of the rifle. They are worn and dirty, reminding us that of that final march to that last battle. Dog tags. Dog tags are worn by each service member. They have them printed into them, all the important identifying information regarding that individual. The dog tags are hung from the rifle so that the name of the fallen will never be forgotten. The helmet. The helmet is an important piece of protection on the battlefield. Some believe that the helmet of the individual represents what that person stood for. And so the helmet is placed on top of the rifle, signifying that the battle is over for this soldier and the greatest sacrifice has been made. 
it will never be one again. This bronze soldier's cross or battle cross stands in tribute and memory as we honor, we remember, and never forget those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. The Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 607, does, on this Vietnam Veterans Day, March 29, 2024, hereby dedicate this battle cross to the memory of those 58,267 names now listed on that polished black wall in Washington, D.C. Thank you. We will now read the roll call of the local Vietnam War dead. From Montgomery County, Samuel W. Arrington, Jr. Larry Glenn Baldwin. George Casper Barsom III. David Allen Barton. George Hutchinson Beasley. William Lee Brooks, Donald Frederick Burnett, George Canada Jr., James Ellis Candidate, Harry Gibson Carter, John James Cravey. John Dudley Dollhouse, Charles Tyrone Day, Charles Milton Diaz, Samuel M. Deutschman, James Walter Dennis Jr., Thomas E. Doran, William James Falk. John Douglas Floyd. Samuel Lee Gant. William Hugh Gardner, Jr. Willie Giles, Jr. Johnny Reese Godwin, Jr. Warren Hardy, Jr. Carl Coleman Harris, Eugene Hood, Curtis Johnson, Floyd Milton Keith, Robert Edward Lavender, Christopher Lauren Mayer, Louis William McLean III, Frank Leonard Miller III, Kenneth Edward Mims, Homer Mitchell Jr., Robert Lewis Moore, Eugene Murray, Henry McCarthy Oliver, Dudley Rudolph Patty, James Patrick Rawlins, William T. Rogers IV, Jimmy L. Scott, Travis Henry Scott, Jr., William J. Seawright, Jr., Joseph Henry Shelton III, Thomas James Sims, James Allen Skinner, George Robert Smiley, Malcolm Carlos Smith, Johnny Williams Jr., 
Eugene Ziegler. Targo County, Thomas C. Jackson, Samuel G. Crowell, Joseph Marvin, James A. Rainwater, William E. Murph, Joe W. Smith, Albert Davis, William C. Northington, James E. Boyer, Ronald G. Crow, William E. Suttle, Michael E. White, Ralph W. Jones, Kenneth E. Mims, Elmore County, Richard Clark, Larry Davidson Cook, James Willie James Cottrell, Charles William Davis, Jimmy Dale Hudson, Joseph W. Johnson, David Linwood Mathis, Calvin McGinty Jr., Thomas Earl Owens, Abraham Powell, James Thomas Ruffin, John Lee Smith, Harvey M. Wadsworth, Jimmy L. Williams, Dale Keith Wilson, Dan B. Yarborough, Bullock, Macon, and Russell Counties, Booker T. Davis, Jr., Lamar McLean, Van A. Norris, Robert L. Perry, Robert L. Walker, Jr., William E. Boone, the fourth, Ananias Boyd, Earl Dilworth, Jr., Edward E. Howard, Sanford S. Johnson, Ronald C. Ruff, James C. Adams, David T. Bell, Jacob Bennett, Leo C. Dixon, Charlie B. Ingram, John H. Jones, Jr., Joe L. Jones, James Kennedy, Gregory P. Lawrence, Clarence Lockhart, Larry R. McDuffie, Elijah Miles Jr., Robert R. Mills, Udon Harker, Eddie D. Peoples, Willie J. Robinson, Frank A. Sablan, Rodney R. Sanders, Melvin L. Sellers, Charlie T. Tanton, Bruce G. Tyndall, William O. Turner, Hurston Worrell, That's quite a list of names, folks. I know you thought it would never end. Keep in mind, these are the names of men that lost their lives in Vietnam. 
They cannot answer the final roll call. In your mind, imagine that many bodies stretched out here on the grass. It kind of brings it home and it's hard to think about. At a period of time during 1968, over 400 were being killed a week. But I just want you to think about that. We have many distinguished guests. I would like to recognize one in particular, a beloved friend of all veterans, Martha Poole. Martha is here with us today. We know her for not only her work with the Red Cross, but also with those wonderful articles about veterans that she writes monthly for the Montgomery or Alabama Gazette. She has a table over here where she has calendars and gifts for everyone here. So please take advantage of that. As we think about those who made the ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam, I'd like to ask Mary Huffman to come to the microphone with me and join me in singing, O Valiant Hearts, Who To Your Glory Came. Mary is the organist at Woodland Presbyterian Church in Notasalga, Alabama, also the author-editor of Pilgrim Psalter. And as we look at this particular song, as we hear the words, I'd like you to think about this. Usually, Vietnam Veterans Day does not coincide with Good Friday, but this year it does. And as you listen to the words of the song, please think about the significance of that. We will now have the Folds of Honor ceremony in the Missing Man table, following by the Firing of Honor.
The flag folding ceremony represents the religious principles upon which our great country was originally founded. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature, for as American citizens trusting in God, it is him to whom we turn in times of peace, as well as in times of war, for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. In the words of Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood and mothers, for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to fathers, who have also given their sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon, and glorifies in the Hebrews' eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in the Christian's eyes God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The thirteenth and last fold, when the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our national motto, In God We Trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it has the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones and were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the U.S. Armed Forces, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. It is also a military tradition to place three rifle cartridges representing the three rifle volleys with the folded flag during presentation. These M1 Garand rifle cartridges signify duty, honor, and sacrifice. Members of Central Alabama Chapter 607 Vietnam Veterans of America wish to honor our fellow brothers and sisters in arms who are not with us anymore, whether their passing came during combat or many years later. We honor this by presenting to you the missing man table. The table is round to represent everlasting concern on the part of the survivors for their missing loved ones. The tablecloth is white symbolic of the purity of their intentions in responding to their country's call to arms. A single red rose signifies the blood that many have shed and sacrificed to ensure the freedom of the United States of America. It also reminds us of the family and friends who keep the faith 
while awaiting their return. Sam, on. Order, on. The black ribbon is for the heavy heart which we all feel at their loss. A slice of lemon on the plate represents the bitter fate of the missing. The salt is symbolic of the countless fallen tears of the families and friends as they wait. An inverted glass represents the fact that the missing and fallen can no longer partake with us. A lit candle is the light of hope which lights and lives in the hearts to illuminate their way home away from their captors to open arms of a grateful nation and the empty chair shows that they are no longer with us. Receive the benediction, and now may the grace of God the Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, now and forevermore. Amen. In this dirty old part of the city, where the sun refused to shine People tell me there ain't no use in trying Now my girl, you're so young and pretty One thing I know is true You'll be dead before your time is due Watch my dad
it, baby. You know it too.